Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time, Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. You know, just about everybody is interested in good nutrition these days. The newspapers and magazines play up articles about vitamins, food energy, good nourishment in general. And, of course, better nutrition is more important than ever in wartime. So let's look at the nutrition facts about parquet margarine, Kraft's delicious spread for bread that's an economical source of important food values. First, parquet margarine is an excellent energy food. In fact, it's one of the best energy foods you can serve. Now, that's mighty important these busy wartime days. Second, parquet margarine is a reliable food source of vitamin A. In fact, every pound contains 9,000 units of this essential vitamin the whole year round. Now, that's important, too, because vitamin A is so necessary to good health. And, incidentally, parquet is wonderfully good tasting. It's the margarine that tastes so good. So get acquainted with delicious economical parquet margarine. Ask your food dealer tomorrow for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, now let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve. After a hard day at the water department, he comes trudging home, shakes the snow from his collar, stamps his feet on the doormat, opens the front door, and is greeted by a warm smell that can mean only one thing. Cabbage. Well, where there's cabbage, there may be corned beef. Leroy! Hi, Uncle, right down. Oh, You're going to break your neck one of these days. No, I won't. Well, I'm going to break mine. Is that your sled out on the sidewalk? Yeah, that's funny. I was just going to... Yeah, that's funny. I was just going to suggest that. <laughs> Judge Hooker was here a few minutes ago. He left something for you. Oh, he did, eh? What did he want? Nothing. He just left it and said, here, maybe this will shut your uncle up. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> what did he leave? A gas mask. You... <laughs> so they finally got around to the gas masks, eh? I've been after Hooker for months to get some action on that. A fine head warden he is. All he needs is a head. <laughs> they expect us to fight a war with armbands? Where is the thing? Right in here on the sofa. Oh, well, let's have a look at it. Oh, I see you've already had a look at it. Oh, well, I didn't. Probably run. broken it. That's not a toy, Leroy. Okay. Try it on, Unc. Let's see. How do you get into this thing? Yeah, there. How do I look? You never look better. Yes. Here, take a look in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, let's go out and show Bertie, huh? Come on out in the kitchen. Can you see? Here, I'll open the door for you. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing chair. Oh, 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 what's that? It's all right, Bertie. It's only me. Oh, man. I thought they'd come for to carry me home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll put it on again and see if it works. See if you can smell the cabbage through it. Yeah, oh, well, that's an idea. You put that thing on again, Mr. Gillsleeve, and you're going to have to find a new cook, because I will have went. Oh, it's nothing to be afraid of, Bertie. Here, you put it on. Me? Yes. Mr. Gillsleeve, I'd just as soon stick my head in a lion's mouth. Oh, come on, Bertie. Leroy, you get away from me with that. Go on now. Get out of here. I got things to do. <coughs> got to sweep up this mess. Yeah, come on, Leroy. I think we better leave Bertie alone. Ain't going to have people coming in my kitchen with no gas mask. My cooking ain't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Uncle Moore, you beat me home. Hello, Marjorie. I didn't hear you come in. It's still snowing. Leroy, I nearly fell over your sled out in front. Well, why don't you look where you're going? Y young man, I told you to put that away. Oh, just going to. Well, just do it. How's the new secretary, Uncle Mort? Oh, uh, secretary, she'll never do. I'm going to have to let her go. Bessie, she drives me crazy. Oh, that's too bad. Say, we had a little excitement at the plant today. Excitement? Really? What happened? We had a fire. No kidding. Did the engines come? Yes, but it didn't amount to much. The fire was out by the time they got there. Wait a minute. Uh, where did this fire start? In the shipping room, in a pile of crates. What time did it happen? Oh, it must have been around 12.30. The alarm rang while we were at lunch. Well, everybody was out of the way, eh? Were the police called in on this? Well, I don't know. I didn't even see the fire. 
Some of the boys told me about it afterwards. So they didn't even call the police. Hey, Unc, do you think it was a firebug? I have my own ideas of what it was. But I'll tell you one thing. By George, it's about time this town woke up. Woke up to what? To the danger. With this arms plant here, anything might happen. Oh, but Uncle Mort, it was only a very small fire. You don't think it was... I don't say it was, but it could have been. What? Sabotage. Oh, boy. I've been expecting something like this. Give me my coat. Where are you going, Uncle Mort? Now, maybe they'll listen to me. Give me my hat. Here, what are you going to do, Uncle? Give me my galoshes. Uncle Mort, you'll be careful. Give me my mittens. Uncle, wait a minute, and I'll get you my secret decoder. No time. (laughs) All I can say is it's lucky there's one man in this town who's got his eyes open. Uncle, look out! The sled! Sabotage! Good evening, Mrs. Grubley. Can't stop to talk. I got to see Judge Hooker about the sabotage. Sabotage, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, fire in the arms plant just this morning. What else could it be but sabotage? Well, now I wonder. I hear a trolley jump the track on State Street this afternoon. Sabotage, Mrs. Grubley, sabotage. (laughs) Oh, good evening, Mr. Jackson. Terrible about the sabotage, isn't it? Fire in the arms, plant, State Street trolley, jump the track. It's everywhere. Well, now I'm beginning to understand what's going on around here. For the last two days, somebody's stolen my morning paper. Sabotage, Jackson, sabotage. <laughs> Have you heard about the sabotage, Mrs. Plotnick? Arms plant burned down, trolleys all off the track, and some fiend is stealing newspapers. That's terrible, and have you noticed what a cold winter they're having? It's sabotage, Mrs. Plotnick, sabotage. <laughs> well, hello, Gillisleeve. Come in. Wipe your feet first. We haven't got a moment to lose, Judge. Why, what's up? You're in charge of civilian defense here. What are you doing about it? What do you mean? You heard about the fire down at the plant? Yes. Sabotage, Hooker, as sure as I'm standing here. Now listen, Gildy, that fire was a plain accident. It was thoroughly investigated by the police. The police? Hooker, this is war. Would you use a bean shooter to sink a battleship? Nix, Gildy, Nix. There's someone in the parlor. They hear you. I don't care who hears me. The police department in this town is no good, and you know it. Gildy, please. Well, they couldn't find a spy in a bathtub. Gildersleeve. I'll handle this, Judge. Oh, hello, Chief. (laughs) Mr. Gildersleeve, as chief of police in this town, I don't have to take any talk like that from a water commissioner. Just a minute now. Let me explain something to you, Gildersleeve. The dumb cops in this town aren't so dumb. Uh. We're keeping pretty close tab on what goes on, who goes where, and why. It's nervous guys like you that make trouble for us. I'm not nervous. (laughs) Going around alarming everybody. Who do you think you are, Paul Revere? I've got my hands full now denying this thing. Uh, denying? Well, I'm sorry, Chief. I thought that that's that... very important now for people to keep calm. Yeah. And as an influential citizen, you should help them. You're a leader in this town, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, you yeah. think so, Chief? Well, I hear you're making addresses now and then. People look up to you for guidance. Well, I try to do what I can. So at a time like this, you must try to calm people, not, not get them excited. Calm, huh? It may be you're right, Chief. Maybe I had it wrong. Certainly. Well, Judge, I haven't got a moment to lose. Where are you going? I'm going out and calm people. So long. Marjorie! She's gone out, Uncle. Oh, hello, Mrs. Ransom. Hello, Leroy. Your uncle just came over and kidnapped me. Yeah. Leroy, go and get Bertie, will you? Tell her Mrs. Ransom will be spending the night with us. But why? Throckmorton, why are you being so mysterious? I just don't want you staying over there in that house all alone, that's all. Leroy, don't stand there staring. I told you to go get Bertie. Bertie! <laughs> and don't whistle. Do you want to scare the life out of people? What's the matter? What happened? It's nothing happened, Bertie. Be calm. Everybody be calm. And Mrs. Ransom is spending the night with us, Bertie. You think we can find a place for her? Oh, why, Sure. I'll put in a room with Miss Marjorie, if that's all right. Well, I hope I won't be too much trouble to y'all. No trouble. I'll go right up and make the other bed so it'll be all ready. Uh, Leroy, why don't you go up and help Bertie make the bed? Oh, I don't need no help. Oh, she don't need no help. Yes, yeah, oh. <laughs> well, uh, uh, come on in the living room, Leela. Yeah, come on in. Make yourself at home. I'll be the host here, Leroy. <laughs> uh, have you done your homework? Yep, I did it all this afternoon. Oh. Well, uh, it's time for you to go upstairs and take a bath. But I took a bath, Uncle. When? 
yesterday. I thought so. Go right upstairs. But, Uncle... Um, Don't argue with me. You're filthy. I want you to take a bath. <laughs> okay. If you want to get rid of me, why don't you just say so? I can take a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Leroy. Good night. Sleep tight. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's so cute. Yeah. Uh, now, Throckmorton, what are you being so mysterious about? Leela, I want you to be calm. You mustn't be alarmed. I'm not alarmed, Throckmorton. Well, don't be. Whatever happens, don't worry, because nothing is going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Throckmorton, hold my hand. Remember, I'm always near you, Leela. Day or night, I can be at your side in five minutes. Uh, four minutes. <laughs> so be calm. Oh, uh, Throckmorton, you're hiding something. Now, don't get excited, honey. There was a little trouble down at the arms plant today. Nothing much, but it looked like sabotage. <gasps> oh, hold me close, Throckmorton. There, there, now. Uh, feel better? Oh, much. Uh, tell me, what is sabotage? <laughs> <laughs> Well, perhaps it's better that you don't know. But where there's sabotage, there's usually a saboteur. Uh, where there's saboteur, there's usually an elephant picture. <laughs> Leroy, I told you to go up and take a bath. I was just going on. Uh, that darn kid, Sabu. I've got to do something about him. Let's see. Uh, where were we now? Uh, you were over here, remember? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Uh, tell me all about whatever it was. Yes. Uh... What was I going to say? Uh, funny, it's gone completely out of my mind now. Well, uh, tell me about something else then. I love it when you tell me about things. Yes, you do? <laughs> yes, I love you when you get serious. Leela, seriously? Yes, Throckmorton? We've been engaged quite a while now. Three whole weeks? Leela, tell me, do you believe in long engagements? Oh, I... Uh, excuse me, telephone... Be right back. Uh, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Mr. Gildersleeve, Charlie Anderson out the waterworks. Oh, hello, Uncle Charlie. How's everything out there? Everything's peachy. The dad blame sniffs. The valve is jammed and the dad blame whatchamacallit. Stop the whole dad blame pump. Won't be any water till we get it fixed. If, oh, my goodness. No water, eh? Well, how long will that take? You tell me. I can't fix a pump without parts, can I? Yes, well... All I got to say is, if I'm going to be super and gall darn tendon to this gall darn waterworks, I've got to have a little cooperation, gall darn it. <laughs> All right, Charlie, keep your shirt on. Uh, what do you need? I need a snifter valve. What do you think I need? That's what's busted, ain't it? Uh, All right. What's the nearest place we can get a, one of those things? I'll go myself if I have to. Well, you might be able to pick one up over to Grafton. Honeywell Supply Company there, if you can get the fellow to open up. I'll run right over. It, what is it you want now? A snifter valve. Snifter valve, God darn it. <laughs> snifter valve, huh? Okay. And Charlie. Yes? Don't say a word about this to anybody till I've had a chance to investigate it. It may be sabotage. How's that? It may be sabotage. Maybe what? Dirty work. I call darn it. Leela, something has come up. What? Would you be game to drive over to Grafton with me tonight? Oh, Throckmorton, I'd go anywhere with you. Maybe midnight before we get there. I don't care. We'll have to get the fellow out of bed. Oh, Throckmorton, this is so romantic. Oh, do you think so? Oh, you know, I've always had a secret longing to elope. Elope? I was just going over to Grafton for a snifter valve. Throckmorton Gildersleeve. Now, Leela. You deliberately let me off. Leela, I did not. You did too. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. You know, it's just natural that when a food is particularly good, lots of people want it. Well, that certainly is the case with parquet margarine, Kraft's delicious, nutritious spread for bread. And it explains why sometimes you may find your food dealer is temporarily out of parquet margarine. The fact is, Kraft is doing everything possible to keep dealers supplied. But so many of you have discovered parquet's delicious goodness, so many of you are asking for parquet these days that, well, some dealers just can't keep up with the demand. So it's a good thing to watch your dealer's stock. Buy parquet whenever you can. No doubt about it, parquet margarine is well worth waiting for if your dealer should happen to be temporarily out. It's such a delicious spread for bread, so nutritious too, providing food energy and important vitamin A. So always watch for, always ask for, parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> Let's return.
return now to the great Gildersleeve and his one-man crusade to save Summerfield from an unknown enemy. Last night, he drove 30 miles to Grafton for a new part to repair the pump, the waterworks, which may explain why he's a little late in arriving at the office this morning. But his new secretary is there and already hard at work. Hello. Are you still there, Mabel? Well, so he said, what do you want to do? So I said, I don't know. What do you want to do? So he said, I don't know. What do you want to do? Well, you know, it could have gone on like that all night. So I said, oh, let's go to the movies. So we went to the... Oh, I think the big boy's coming. I'll call you back, Mabel. Oh, good morning, uh, uh, Bessie. Uh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Any calls? Oh, about a million, Mr. Gildersleeve. Any complaints? Oh, yes, they're all complaints. Don't be so happy about it. <laughs> this may be very bad for me, very bad. Oh, they all say there's no water. I know that. Puts me in a very difficult position. Did you tell them what I told you? Yes, sir. There's been a temporary interruption in the service owing to circumstances yes. beyond that. Yes, all case. right, all right. I wrote it. I ought to know what it is. No word from Judge Hooker? No, sir. Were you expecting? Yes, I asked him and the chief of police to drop over. I'm holding an investigation of that affair at the waterworks last night. Oh, that reminds me, Mr. Gildersleeve. What? I turned on the water at my house this morning and nothing came out. Nothing came out. <laughs> uh, oh, hello, Judge. What is it now, Gildy? This is a busy morning for me. Yeah, what's this all about? Uh, step into my private office, will you, gentlemen? Uh, miss, uh, if you there, Bessie. When Uncle Charlie turns up, send him right in, will you? Your Uncle Charlie. Charlie Anderson, the superintendent of the waterworks. My Uncle Charlie. Uh, cigar, gentlemen. Judge? No, thanks. Uh, Chief? Never smoke before lunch. Well, gentlemen, now perhaps you listen to me. Last night, I tried to call your attention to an act of sabotage. Gildersleeve, are you still harping on that? Chief, I take exception to that word, harp. Listen, instead of telling me how to run my department, why don't you learn how to run your own? I got up this morning and there was no water. Same at my house. I couldn't shave. Couldn't make any coffee. And do you know why there was no water? I suppose you think it was sabotage. It's as plain as the nose on your face. Uh, oh, uh, come in, Uncle Charlie. But, Gildy, what makes you I'm think... I'm not that... asking you to take my word for it. Ask Charlie Anderson here. Charlie was there when it happened. What's that called, darn it? Yes, Charlie, I want you to tell these two gentlemen in your own words just what happened at the waterworks last night. Why the dad blame... Wait a minute, wait a minute. A minute. We're going to conduct an investigation here. Let's be orderly about it. Your name is Charlie Anderson, is it not? You know darn well it is. I know, I know. Just customary to ask. Where do you live? What's the matter with him? He knows where I live. God darn, he knows as well as I do. Yes, I know. That's, that's, that's for the record, Charlie. <laughs> now, answer the judge's question, please. Well, God darn it, I live next to Pink's garage. Right where I've lived for 23 years. God darn it. Yep. Perhaps, uh, <laughs> perhaps you'd better let me interrogate the witness, Judge. Uh, Charlie... What went wrong out at the pumping station last night? Holy cow, you was out there. You seen it with your own eyes. I know it, but tell these gentlemen. The dad blames this. The valve busted. That's what you want to know? Uh, tell us more about it, Charlie. What sort of a pump do you operate out there? Well, it's a vertical triple expansion crank and flywheel pumping engine with an independent superheater, mechanical stoking. It does about 20 RPMs with 175 whoa, pounds. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, you ask, I'll turn it. Tell me, Charlie. Jeepers. Yes. <laughs> yes, take it easy, Charlie. Now, now tell us. About this incident to the snifter valve, now think carefully before you answer this. Do you think it might have been sabotage? Sabotage, my eye. That valve was living on borrowed time. <laughs> I told Flanahan, I told him two years ago when he was commissioner she was going to blow. Told him right to his face, and gall darn it, she blowed. <laughs> Your witness, Gildy. Now, look here, Judge. You got Charlie all confused. Confused my neck. You stay out of this. Uh, you listen to me, Gates. I demand adequate protection out there at that reservoir, and I intend to get it. We can't be guarding every dog kennel and fire hydrant in town, Gildersleeve. We haven't got enough men. If you want your little duck pond guarded, you'll have to guard it yourself. All right, Judge. If the police won't help us, this is a job for civilian defense. It's up to you as head warden to appoint a volunteer guard. All right, Gildy, I'll do that. There's no time to lose. I want you to appoint somebody to stand guard out there tonight. All right, Gildy, I appoint you. Why, God darn it! And don't you let me catch you napping either. <laughs> Come on. Leroy! Uh, Leroy! He's down on the floor, Uncle Mort. Oh, what's he doing down there, Marjorie? I don't know for sure, but it smells like chemistry. 
Anything I can do for you? No, thank you, my dear. Oh, wait a minute. Have you seen my shotgun shells anywhere? No, I haven't. I'll bet Leroy is responsible for that, too. Hi, Alf. What do you want now? Young man, where is my helmet? Helmet? What helmet? What helmet? I suppose I've got thousands of helmets. Sure. I've got football helmets, diving helmets, King Arthur helmets. Where is my air raid helmet? Oh, oh, that. Don't get excited, Unc. It's up in my room. What's it there for? Nothing. Nothing? He's keeping a turtle in it. I am not. He died. <laughs> I'll settle that with you tomorrow. Now, where are my shotgun shells? I know where they are, Miss Gilfleece. In the box with your collar button. There's only one in there. That's all there are, Unc. Don't you remember when we went duck hunting and the P-38s came by and you used Never up... mind. Do you remember now? Never mind. Go get my helmet, please. Okay, Unc. You ain't going hunting tonight, is you, Miss Gilfleece? No, Bertie. This is not duck hunting. A night like tonight is cold enough to shoot a polar bear. <laughs> Here you are, Unc. Yeah, thank you, Leroy. No, Bertie, I'm not hunting polar bears tonight. I'm hunting saboteurs. Oh, boy. Can I go along? No, Leroy. Are you really going to shoot somebody, Miss Gilfleece? I hope not, Bertie, but if necessary... <laughs> oh, quiet, you. I'm going to guard the reservoir. Oh, gee, Unc, can I go along? No, my boy, I'll have a man with me to share the responsibility. Well, I don't know yet. Hooker will send somebody out. Suppose you bring down my shotgun. But don't load it, Leroy. I'm going next door for a word with Mrs. Ransom. I thought she was sore at you, Unc, from last night. Leroy, I don't like the word sore meaning angry. And Mrs. Ransom is not angry. Go get my shotgun and mind your own business. Okay, Unc. Uh, I wonder if she is sore. I mean angry. She can't be. Not when I'm going out to defend the city against sabotage. Not on a cold night like this. Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Leela. I trust you enjoyed a pleasant ride last night looking for a sniffling Val. Uh, <laughs> uh, Leela, I'm going away. I'm going to stand guard duty tonight out at the reservoir. I'm going to carry a gun, Leela. It'll be dangerous. I thought maybe you might have something you wanted to say to a man who was going to risk his neck to defend your water supply. Yes, I have. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh! <laughs> Nine, ten, eleven, eleven o'clock, and all's well at the waterworks. I say it's eleven o'clock. Are you asleep? Uh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I wish I were. Yes. <laughs> well, you might as well be, Peavy, for the company you've been to me. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I'm cold. Uh, couldn't we call it a night and go home? It, no. We have a duty to perform here, and we're going to do it. Well, that's Mr. Gildersleeve, if you insist. It is kind of lonely out here, isn't it? And cold. Yeah. All right, it's cold, but it's lonely, too. Yes. Yeah. We couldn't go home. No. No. Peavy, when you left your house tonight, did Mrs. Peavy speak to you? Yes, we usually exchange a word or two when either of us is going anywhere. It uh, helps keep things straight. Yes. Leela wasn't speaking to me tonight. Well, Mrs. Peavy and I understand each other pretty well by now, I guess. Tell me, what did she say to you? When? When you left the house. Did she say anything in particular? Uh, yes, she did. She told me to be sure and be quiet when I came in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, may I ask a question? Oh, certainly. Go ahead, Peavy. Uh, what are we doing out here? What, what are we waiting for? Sabotage, Peavy. I told you that. But how can anyone sabotage the water when the water is frozen? They could chop a hole in the ice. Yes, I guess they could. Or they could break into the pump house and do something to the machinery. Yes, I, I guess they could. Or they could simply dynamite the whole business and blow the place to bits. And you and me with it. Oh, dear. I don't say they will, Peavy. Not tonight, anyway. Well, that's good. I don't expect to be here every night. <laughs> well, I guess it's time to take another look at the pump house. Yes, it's warm in there. Yes, come on. Uh, shall I bring my gun? Gun? No. 
For the last time, Peavy, we're going to take no chances on your grandfather's muzzle loader. M- Mr. Gildersleeve, can't I uh, just bring it? Well, all right, if it'll make you any happier. If there's any shooting to be done, my shotgun will take care of it. Remember that. Come on. I really can't remember when I've been so cold. Oh, stop complaining about the cold, Peavy. Think of Valley Forge. I've been thinking of it for quite a while. It wouldn't be time to go home yet. No. No. Mr. Gildersleeve, do, do you hear something? Of course I do. By George, I hear a car. Yeah, that's what I hear, too. I can see lights. They're coming this way. Look, it stopped down there near the gate. You see it? Yes, I, I do. It's a saboteur. P.V., it's a lucky thing we came here tonight. I don't know. I wouldn't say that. He's getting out of the car. He's carrying something. Do you think it's a bomb, Mr. Gildersleeve? What else could it be? I'll give him a hail. Saboteur, stop where you are. We got you covered. He isn't stopping. Maybe maybe he can't hear us. He'll hear us. I'll fire a shot over his head. That'll stop him. Here goes. Yep, misfire. Shell was pretty old. Have you got another? No. Uh, Then I'll use Grandpa's gun. (laughs) For goodness sake, Peavy, is it loaded? Oh, yes. Uh, Grandpa was always ready for anything. I'd uh, stand back if I were you, Mr. Gildersleeve. (laughs) Don't forget to aim over his head. All right. Oh, my goodness, you hit him. I didn't aim anywhere near him. Well, he's down. Come on. If he's unconscious, we can catch him. Hey, it's a woman, Peavy. Oh, Throckmorton. Leela, Peavy, you shot my fiance. Well, no, I, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Leela, Leela, speak to me. Speak to me, Leela. Are you shot? No, Throckmorton, I reckon I just fainted, but... Oh, I declare, you just about scared the life out of me. Oh, thank goodness. I must say, it's a little surprising to have my own fiancé shoot at me after I came all the way out here just to bring you some hot coffee. I didn't shoot at you, Leela. Peavy did the shooting. I didn't know it was coffee, Mrs. Rancho. Leela, what in the world were you thinking of, anyway? What are you doing out here? Oh, Throckmorton, I was so ashamed letting you go off like that without even kissing you goodbye. Oh, uh, Leela, you're wonderful. Then you forgive me? Forgive you? The question is, do you forgive me? Oh, yes, Throckmorton. Goodness, <coughs> how could I resist you in your air raid helmet and all? Uh, Leela, let's make a vow. Let's make a vow that we'll never let anything come between us again. Not even a sniffling vow? Yeah, nothing. Is it a bargain? It's a bargain. But it's not legal, you know, without a seal. A uh, seal? Mm, the law says you have to seal it with a kiss. You little saboteur. Darling. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, would you like a little hot coffee to warm you up? Oh, go home, PB. <laughs> Well, folks, I guess I got a little excited there. The chief is right. These amateur spy hunts usually turn out to be a lot of nonsense. But there is one kind of sabotage that's a constant danger to this country and to all of us, especially our children, and it's something we can all help to fight. That's infantile paralysis. There's a drive on against it right now, and we can help it along by sending our dimes and dollars to the president of the White House. Remember, war breeds epidemics. Let's not get one started here. Good night, everybody. Speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, your food dealer has a wonderful product that gives you a grand tasting macaroni and cheese dish in less time than you'd believe possible. Just seven minutes cooking time to be exact. Kraft Dinner is the name. But let me tell you why this Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese is so quickly prepared. You see, the macaroni in a package of Kraft Dinner is a very special kind. It cooks up fluffy and tender in only seven minutes. Then, too, the Kraft Dinner package contains an envelope of Kraft Grated. You sprinkle Kraft Grated on the fluffy macaroni, stirring its cheese goodness through and through. There, your Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese is ready, and what a grand-tasting dish it is. Economical, too. One package serves four, costs just a few cents a serving. Try Kraft Dinner soon. And if you can, buy Kraft Dinner early in the week. That will help your dealer with his supply problem. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National...